Welcome to Conceptual Learning, where we dive deep into fascinating ideas that challenge our understanding of the world. Today, we're taking a plunge into one of the most controversial theories in human evolution, the aquatic ape theory. So grab your snorkels, folks. We're about to make a splash. The aquatic ape theory, or AAT for short, proposes that humans went through an aquatic or semi-aquatic phase during our evolution. It suggests that many of our unique features, from our hairlessness to our upright posture, can be explained by an ancestor who spent a lot of time in the water. Now, before we dive deeper, let's get one thing straight. This theory isn't widely accepted in the scientific community. It's more of a fringe idea swimming against the tide of mainstream evolutionary biology. But hey, that's what makes it so interesting. The AAT was first proposed in 1960 by marine biologist Alistair Hardy. However, it was writer Elaine Morgan who really made waves with the idea, popularising it in her 1982 book, The Aquatic Ape. So what evidence do proponents of this theory point to? Let's take a look. 1. Hairlessness. Humans are notably less hairy than our primate cousins. AAT supporters argue this is an aquatic adaptation, similar to other marine mammals like dolphins and whales. 2. Subcutaneous fat. We have a layer of fat under our skin that's unusual for primates but common in aquatic mammals. AOAT proponents say this helped us stay warm in the water. 3. Bipedalism. Our upright posture, they argue, developed to help us wade through water. 4. Breath control. Humans have conscious control over our breathing, which is rare in mammals, but useful for diving. 5. Descended larynx. Our voice box is lower than in other primates, which some say could be an adaptation for holding our breath. 6. Webbing between fingers. The slight webbing between our fingers and toes could be a leftover from a more aquatic past. 7. Tears. We produce copious tears, which AAT supporters say could have helped protect our eyes in a salty environment. 8. Swimming babies. Human infants can instinctively hold their breath and make swimming motions, which is seen as evidence of our aquatic heritage. Sounds pretty convincing, right? Well, not so fast. Let's look at why most scientists give this theory the cold shoulder. 1. Lack of fossil evidence. There's no fossil record supporting an aquatic phase in human evolution. 2. Alternative explanations. Many of these aquatic features can be explained by other means. For example, our hairlessness might be an adaptation for sweating and temperature regulation in savannah environments. 3. Incomplete adaptations. If we really had an aquatic phase, why don't we have more pronounced aquatic features like webbed hands and feet? 4. Timing issues. The time frame proposed for this aquatic phase doesn't align well with what we know about human evolution. 5. Better terrestrial adaptations. Many of our key features, like our ability to run long distances, are better explained by terrestrial evolution. Despite these criticisms, the aquatic ape theory has managed to keep its head above water in popular culture. It's been featured in documentaries, books, and even inspired some artistic representations of human evolution. But here's where it gets really interesting. While the full aquatic ape theory might not hold water, pun intended, some researchers suggest that waterside environments might have played a more significant role in human evolution than previously thought. The waterside hypotheses propose that easy access to water and aquatic food sources could have influenced human evolution without necessarily involving a fully aquatic phase. This idea is gaining some traction and shows how even unconventional theories can inspire new avenues of research. So, what can we learn from the aquatic ape theory? Well, it reminds us that the story of human evolution is far from complete. There are still many mysteries to solve and questions to answer. It also showcases the importance of challenging established ideas in science. While the AAT itself might not be widely accepted, it has sparked discussions and inspired research that might not have happened otherwise. Lastly, it's a testament to human curiosity and our desire to understand our origins. Whether we came from the seas or the savannas, we're a species that loves to question, explore and imagine. And there you have it, folks. The aquatic ape theory in all its controversial glory. What do you think? Are we land apes or sea monkeys? Let us know in the comments below.
If you enjoyed this deep dive into evolutionary theory, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And remember, here at Conceptual Learning, we're always ready to make a splash with big ideas. Until next time, keep questioning, keep learning, and who knows, maybe we'll see you at the beach, you know, for some evolutionary research.